couple of nights ago, I told you that a leaked document revealed that Antony Blinken actually knew that Israel was blocking entering Gaza a prior uh, to the confrontation of journalists at uh, the press conference and the video footage that was released that he knew prior to that. So there were leaked documents that exposed that information. Now we have more information, which is revealing that Antony Blinken not only knew prior to that, but also that apparently Netanyahu has decided to snitch a little bit and reveal even more information. And I got to tell you, it does not look good for Antony Blinken. Uh, the evidence is definitely against him. <laughs> the evidence is not on his side. That is for certain. And then there, of course, is this call for Antony Blinken uh, to resign. I also think that Antony Blinken should be arrested uh, for war crimes. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, this particular clip here, it's a press conference. This is from Dropsite News. When asked about uh, Dropsite's report that Secretary Antony Blinken approved Israeli policy to bomb humanitarian trucks if seized by Hamas, the State Department spokesperson Matt Miller maintained the U.S. had not explicitly signed off on bombing convoys. So let's go ahead and get into this here. Um, you guys have seen this journalist uh, before. I want to get started with this, and then we're going to get into that damning article, uh, which reveals a lot of information. Again, like I said, Netanyahu is snitching. He is, but you know what? Netanyahu was like, look, it's weird because it's like, he's such a, a corrupt, evil, genocidal maniac. But at the same time, Netanyahu is making a statement that, oh, no, 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 Antony Blinken, you're not going to let this you know, all be pushed on me. I'm going to tell people about you as well. So it is not a good look for Antony Blinken. Listen to what Matt Miller has to say to this question here. Let me ask you about a report in Dropside. And it says that uh, Secretary Blinken, uh, Blinken uh, approved a policy to bomb eight trucks. That's what, what an Israeli cabinet member said. Are you aware of this report and do you have any comment? On it? I am aware of the report. And I'm, I'm glad you asked me about it. Look, the suggestion that we in any way signed off on bombing humanitarian con convoys is absurd. It's just not true. Um, of course, Israel has the right to target Hamas militants. That has always been the case. And so, look, if, if you had a situation where Hamas commandeered a convoy, and Hamas militants were operating a convoy, of course Israel would have the right to strike those militants. That's not been the situation that we've seen over the past year, except in some very limited circumstances. There have been a few reports here and there of Hamas commandeering convoys. Um, uh, in most cases, returned quickly to the humanitarian organizations. It has not been, uh, there's not been any widespread evidence that we have seen of Hamas actually taking convoys and commandeering them, which is, I think, the, the scenario or the, the proposition that this scenario um, presumes. So the strikes that Israel has conducted on humanitarian convoys have been times when they have had failures in their deconfliction processes, where they have had fa uh, intelligence failures, and when they've just made basic mistakes. And Pause. So let me go ahead and call out the lie because you know they expose their self, right? Um, if they had failures in their intelligence, why does it seem like the failure with the intelligence always happens when they kill civilians? Israel has shown you through these past couple of weeks that they had no problem uh, seeking out, identifying and attacking uh, a Hezbollah leader, going after and making specific targets to uh, one of the Hamas leaders who was in Iran. And they have said this publicly that their intelligence is that great that they're able to do that, that they can actually pick up like a, a spot on someone's shoe. So Matt Miller is lying to you. It's not a mistake. You don't mistakenly genocide a population. It's not a mistake. You don't mistakenly just block aid, uh, blow up humanitarian food trucks. That's not a mistake. That's intentional. 
And what's crazy about this is as much as he's trying to defend Israel, Netanyahu is not trying to defend the U.S. government because he's going to throw Antony Blinken under the bus. Let's continue. The thing here. that we have made clear about those is that those mistakes are unacceptable and that humanitarian workers need to be protected and humanitarian aid, aid needs to be protected. So the idea that we that any one of this department signed off on bombing humanitarian Congress is just absolutely ridiculous. No, it's not absolutely ridiculous. Of course, Matt Miller isn't going to stand up there and say, oh, yes, we ordered that or oh, we had no problem with that happening or we knew about that prior to. Of course, he isn't going to tell you that. But I'm going to tell you that because let me go ahead and sign in here. This article here from Dropside News, and I think this is just very, very damning, very damning uh, towards the U.S. government. And I want to go ahead and bring this up on the screen. Everyone needs to see this. Blinken approved policy to bomb aid trucks. Israeli cabinet, cabinet members suggest. So I want to read this again, just so everybody, we all understand. Blinken approved policy to bomb aid trucks. Israeli cabinet members suggest. So this is not coming from the journalists themselves. This information is coming from the Israeli cabinet. So let's continue on here. So you see, this is what happens when you continue to try to defend and cover up for a genocidal apartheid state because you have the monetary ties to the Israeli lobby because you are locked in to their donors. This is what happens. Because you want Israel to exist, not because you necessarily care about the Israelis, but because you have particular interests in the resources that are in that area. We got to be very clear about this. Now, here is Antony Blinken walking right next to Benjamin Netanyahu. So let's get into this information that was uncovered by Drop, Drop uh, Site News. I believe this is Ryan Grimm's uh, new site here. So listen to this. From the very beginning of Israel's assault on the Gaza Strip, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had his hands on the steering wheel. After October 7th, Blinken was the first senior U.S. official to arrive in Israel on October 11th. I'm going with a very simple and clear message that the U.S. has Israel's back, Blinken reportedly said uh, before he boarded the plane. He returned again days later, this time. Blinken was there to demand that Israel rethink its decision to bomb any humanitarian aid entering Gaza and impose a total siege on the Strip. Let me say, let me say this again. This time, Blinken was there to demand that Israel rethink its decision to bomb any humanitarian aid entering Gaza and impose a total siege on the Strip. In exchange... U.S. President Joe Biden offered to visit Israel himself. Reportedly, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu explained to Antony Blinken upon his arrival on October 16th. Let's highlight this date. I hate how a subsect does that. I have got people in my cabinet who don't want an aspirin to get into Gaza because of what has happened. Let's do this again. Benjamin Netanyahu explained to Antony Blinken upon his arrival on October 16th last year. I have got people in the cabinet who don't want an aspirin to get into Gaza because of what has happened. What this tells you is that Antony Blinken was warned that the Israeli cabinet did not want aid entering Gaza. This was prior to, prior to us covering the blockage of aid not getting through. So does everybody remember this? He knew way in advance. We're talking about October 16th, a couple of days after October 7th. This is way before we started seeing the videos where they were blocking the trucks or where they were bombing the trucks, or they were stealing food off of the trucks and setting it on fire so that people in Gaza couldn't have it. That is how long Antony Blinken knew 
that they didn't want the aid to come in. And Antony Blinken said nothing. During every press conference that he had, he said absolutely nothing. So Benjamin Netanyahu snitched on Antony Blinken and told everybody, no, no, no. I told Antony Blinken on October 16th that my cabinet members did not want the aid to go into Gaza. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that the moment the video started to appear that showed that Israel was blocking aid from getting to people in Gaza, intentionally starving the people. When Antony Blinken had a press conference after those videos were released and he said, well, we do not agree with that. He went on to tell you that we will tell them, you know, no, that can't happen. And, uh, Israel has a right to defend itself and how they do so, you know, matters. You can't block aid from getting in and we'll have to look into that. Uh, we'll get Israel to investigate their self. They'll have to look into their self. They have been lying to you since day one. And now Netanyahu is dropping the ball on Antony Blinken because he's going to let people know if I go down, I'm not going down alone. I'm taking you with me because you knew. He knew before. So let's continue here. From within the Kyria, the Israeli military main headquarters in Tel Aviv, Blinken participated in the frantic discussions of the Israeli war cabinet, the decision-making forum guiding the genocidal campaign that were occurring in parallel to conversations in the broader security cabinet. Let's continue here. This is when we get to the report from Channel 12 reporter Yaron Avraham. On October 16th and 17th, the security cabinet deliberated for hours over the precise wording of the decision, which each draft being passed between the cabinet room and Blinken's room, a distance of a few meters away inside the Kyria. Eventually, Around 3 a.m., they arrive at an agreed upon text that is read in the cabinet room in English. So Anthony Blinken can't even say he didn't know. It's read in English. Avraham's account of the process was independently corroborated by a reporter from the competing Channel 13 who wrote, the discussion with Blinken is conducted as follows. He is sitting in a room in the Kyria with his advisors and security team while security cabinet holds the discussion. Dermer goes back and forth and interfaces with him. Blinken, for his part, concluded the day was a triumphant speech taking responsibility for the restarting of the humanitarian aid to Gaza. And we went over his whole speech before here, right? So he says here, to that end today and at our request, the U.S. and Israel have agreed to develop a plan that will enable humanitarian aid from donor nations and multilateral organizations to reach civilians in Gaza and them alone, including the possibility of creating areas to help keep civilians out of harm's way. Let me pause here for a second. So this is also a mask off moment because you got to read in between the lines. If Antony Blinken was stating here that they had an agreement with Israel that they would be able to send in humanitarian aid, and it says that it would reach those civilians alone, keeping them out of harm's way. What that tells you is that Israel always had the option and the opportunity to not kill the civilians. See, these are the kind of things that I, I think people just don't really pay close attention to. It's this stuff right here. If Antony Blinken had admitted that him and Israel, they made that agreement, they're going to get the aid just to the civilians alone, that means that Israel can sort out the civilians from Hamas. And if Israel can sort out the civilians from Hamas, that means that this whole theory that Hamas was using the people as human shields was a lie from the get-go. You see how they tell on themselves. It goes on to say here, 
We share Israel's concern that Hamas may seize or destroy aid entering Gaza or otherwise preventing it from reaching the people who need it. If Hamas in any way blocks humanitarian assistance from reaching civilians, including by seizing the aid itself, we'll be the first to condemn it and we will work to prevent it from happening again. So this was an if, if Hamas did that. But at this particular point, number one, they never had any proof that that was happening. And number two, at this particular point, why are you bringing up the possibility of something Hamas may do instead of focusing on what Israel was doing at that point in time? It goes on to say the following day after an additional round of cabinet meetings, this time helmed by both Blinken and Biden, an outline of the decision was publicly announced by Prime Minister Netanyahu's office. We will not allow humanitarian assistance in the form of food and medicine from our territory to the Gaza Strip. They've been lying to you. They've been lying to you. I want to highlight all this here. Publicly announced by Prime Minister Netanyahu's office, we will not allow humanitarian assistance in the form of food and medicines from our territory to the Gaza Strip. And in a separate Hebrew version, in light of President Biden's demand, Israel will not thwart humanitarian supplies from Egypt as long as it is only food, water, and medicine for the civilian population located in southern Gaza Strip or moving there, and as long as these supplies do not reach Hamas. So once again, Israel was still acting as an occupier and making the decision about what can go into Gaza again. Any supplies that reach Hamas will be thwarted, goes on to say that there. Now, the substance of the Blinken approved policy was starkly conveyed by security cabinet member Bezalel Smutrich, who later told the Israeli media, we in the cabinet were promised at the outset that there would be monitoring and that aid trucks hijacked by Hamas and its organizations would be bombed from the air and the aid would be halted. So you see, this is what is coming from the security cabinet. And the security cabinet, this is what they were told that they were promised. Now, to go on, I want to add something else. Got to make sure we highlight this, the Blinken approved policy. So again, it was him. He was the one who went there first after October 7th. So people really got to, you really have to pay attention to what they are doing here. State Department spokesperson uh, Vedant Patel told Dropside News the suggestion that anyone at the State Department signed off in any way on attacks on humanitarian workers or convoys is absurd. We have always been clear, including the immediate aftermath of October 7th, that Israel has the right to strike Hamas militants. Secretary Blinken has been equally clear that Israel needs to ensure that humanitarian aid is delivered to Gaza and the humanitarian workers inside Gaza are protected. The State Department did not clarify whether it approved carrying out airstrikes against Hamas militants who secure aid convoys or seize their contents. Now, again, this was all October of last year. Since those conversations, we have seen video after video that has showed Israel blocking aid from getting into Gaza, Israel bombing aid trying to enter Gaza, Israel seizing aid, trying to get into Gaza, setting it on fire. And not once did Antony Blinken stop them from doing that. Now it goes on to say here, this part is important as well. Minimal aid should be allowed. For Smutrich and other Israeli policymakers, the U.S. approval of the policy presented an opportunity to realize aspirations they had harbored long before October 7th. Already in 2018, as Palestinians in Gaza resisted the Israeli blockade, jokingly referred to by the Israeli government as an appointment with a dietitian. This was the caloric diet. Through mass protests, Smutrich stated, as far as I'm concerned, Gaza should be 
hermeshally sealed. We shouldn't provide them anything. Here's the kicker, guys, right here. Let them die of hunger, thirst, and malaria. I don't care. They are not my citizens. I owe them nothing. So again, these are things that were said prior to, prior to us seeing those videos. The first part of the humanitarian aid policy approved by Blinken, the barring of entry of aid from within the Israeli territory was short-lived. By December 2023, aid had begun entering directly through Israel, and from the very first moment, Israel's monitoring mechanism implemented shortly after the meetings on October 16th and 17th required all aid, regardless of origin, to go through checks within Israel before reaching Gaza, resulting in major delays. Now, this is around the time when we started to see the videos of them setting food and medicine on fire. But the second policy, the thwarting of aid shipments within Gaza, if they reach Hamas, also proved to be an effective tool in Israel's arsenal when it came to starving the Gazan population, because all they had to do was to say, well, yeah, we, we bombed that truck because uh, Hamas, Hamas tried to hijack the truck. They never had to provide any proof, no evidence. All they had to do was say that, and that would excuse their actions. So the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, and people need to see this, this part up here, I just want to show it one more time. Um, Blinken approved policy to bomb aid trucks, Israeli cabinet, cabinet member suggest. So as I told you guys before, they have been lying to you since day one. It's all been lies, whether it's been the State Department, whether it's been Antony Blinken. And honestly, like had it not been for those leaked documents, we probably would not even have this evidence. And that's the thing. The leaked documents really did help. Right. So then it goes on to say here another part that I do want to highlight this part right here. The real problem is the way Israel is conducting this offensive is creating massive obstacles to the distribution of humanitarian aid inside Gaza. Aid that had made it through, through into Gaza without rotting, despite delays caused by the military and by Israeli protesters egged on by the government to block aid trucks, had to then be distributed within Gaza using a handful of trucks Israel allowed to operate in the Strip running on barely available fuel, driven under fire over destroyed roads filled with unexploded munitions and delivered without real-time communications due to blackouts imposed by the Israeli government. For over a million refugees confined to the south of the Strip, whatever food they had received had to then be stored in tents using uh, increasingly scarce containers. Meanwhile, the domestic food production capacity of Gaza has been decimated through the deliberate and gleeful destruction of agriculture by the IDF and bakeries. On January 26, a panel of 17 judges found a real and imminent risk to the rights of Palestinians under the Genocide Convention. On the very same day, the U.S. cut funding to UNRWA after a narrative aggressively promoted by the Israel Knesset members that the agency, which employed tens of thousands in the Gaza Strip, was also employing an untold number of members of Hamas that terrorists had been students in UNRWA run schools. Obviously, that was a lie. That was another excuse for them to block aid. UNRWA is a complete cover up for Hamas activities and terrorist activities. Hamas has taken over this organization. That was the defense that Israel used. He, they went on to say there are 13,000 UNRWA workers in the Gaza Strip and they are all Hamas members or their relatives. Blatant lie. The funding freeze, which has been described at the time as a temporary pause, has largely persisted to this day, crippling the agency's humanitarian efforts. In UNRWA's stead, Israel cultivated relations with foreign NGOs, 
most notably World Central Kitchen, who refrained from criticizing Israel's policy or insisting on a ceasefire and lacked the infrastructure and expertise to make up for the uh, debilitation of UNRWA. Around the same time, Netanyahu repeatedly emphasized in public speeches that the amount of aid Israel is allowing into Gaza is minimal. Regarding humanitarian aid, Minimal aid should be allowed. And when I say minimal, this means not to shy away from a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. There are no innocents in Gaza. So there was Netanyahu saying none of the people there are innocent. All of these people knew. And Antony Blinken was in on it from the get go. And the reality is, again, Anthony Blinken should be in jail. Like this is Blinken approved policy to bomb aid trucks, Israeli cabinet member suggests. And it was Benjamin Netanyahu who snitched, who ratted him out and told people, well, he knew this way ahead of time before that happened. When I told him to his face that my cabinet members did not want aid to go into Gaza. So when Antony Blinken gave that press conference about the humanitarian aid trucks being bombed or prevented from entering Gaza, and he said, we'll have to look into that. I don't know about that. He was lying to you. And he's been lying since day one. All of these people are lying to you. The Biden administration, Kamala Harris, Antony Blinken, Matt Miller, John Kirby, all these people from the State Department, these people have been lying since the very beginning. They have known. They've been known. And the reality is some people are wondering, well, why would they lie? Why would they do that? Because the U.S. government approves of what Israel is doing. The only reason, only reason why politicians, some politicians decided to speak up and say what Israel's doing isn't right. You got to protect the civilians. Uh, there's a possible genocide happening. The only reason those politicians even spoke up is because people protested across the world and have been protesting since after October 7th. That is what pushed the politicians to speak up. Had it not been for those protests, you would hear crickets. Even AOC had to be pushed. Remember this, she took the longest time to call it a genocide. Protesters had to confront her at the movie theater to push her to say the word genocide. They're all in on it. They all approved of it for the most part. And they knew this was happening because the reality is this is what the U S government wants. They agree with what Israel is doing. And had it not been for those protests, they would have never said a word. 